Hi right, guys, in this video, I'm simply just going to be giving you a walkthrough of um, the AWS uh, Management Console. So um, I'm still going to log in as my root user. So you can see I'm going to log in using the email I provided when creating the AWS account. I'm going to put in my password and you can see that I am logging in as the AWS um, account um, root user. So when you actually log into your account for the first time, you should actually see a service dashboard so you're gonna actually see a service dashboard so i'm just going to give you like a walkthrough of how it looks like okay so over here on the right hand side you can actually see the account that you're locking as you know every aws account is going to have an account id so when an aws account is created it's been provided an account id this is the account id over here i'm um, at the bottom the next thing you're going to see it's account right so let me click over there and you can see when you click on the account there are a couple of different things you're going to see that like you can see the account settings you can see the contact information you can actually be able to see payment um currency preference and other aspects like billing and, and all those things you can also see the regions that you actually have um, enabled currently so which aws regions you have enabled so there are some AWS and regions that are enabled by default and those that are disabled by default. So if you want to use those regions, you have to enable them so you can see it over here. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to be able to see IM user and role access to billing. You know, by default, when an account is created, only the root user is going to have access to the billing of the account. So if you want to actually grant other identities in your account to access billing, you have to log in as a root user and actually grant that billing access so that's pretty much what you're going to see um over here so apart from that we're going to go back when you see over here where it says services this is where you're going to access all the different aws services like you're going to have services for analytics you're going to have services for compute services for containers they are all different 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 aws um, services so these are like service families right so if you click here you're going to see all the individual services under containers if you click here on compute you're going to see all the individual services for compute like ec2 batch lambda those are all compute services so um, that's simply what this actually stands for now on the search bar this is where you might search a service let's say for example you want to go to a service called iam you just have to come here on iam and you see you can simply just click and it it's gonna take you over to that aws service so you can see it's taking me here to iam and i can be able to access like the iam service and all that one very important thing that you have to know is that there are some services that are global there are some services that are not global a global service just simply means that when you create a resource in that um under that service that resource is going to be available in all regions okay so when a service is actually global it means that the resources that you create there are going to be available in all regions so this is pretty much where you're going to access the different aws regions you see so when you come over here you're going to see all the different aws regions so you can be able to switch to any region that you want to switch to by just clicking and it's going to actually switch over to that region right now it shows global because i am underneath the im service and the im service is a global service but there are other services that are not global for example you have the ec2 service that is not global you have s3 that is not global and all of that so you see if i actually come over here on ec2 you're gonna see that i can be able to switch to different 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 regions of my choice and we all know that aws us is one that's a north virginia region is the default region apart from that let's say you have questions let's say you want to reach out to aws support you want to maybe ask some um, questions about your billing and everything this is pretty much where you go to so this actually just shows, shows the aws support this is where you're going to actually reach out to aws to actually maybe um, place a request for something let's say for example your service limit actually uh, gets to its maximum and you want to request for more you're going to reach out to aws support let's say you get charged on something and you want to inquire you reach out to aws support let's say you're trying to do something and it fails and you need help you're going to reach out to aws um, support one other thing too that you're going to see over here is notifications so this way you're going to kind of like get notifications and all those things you can create notifications and and all of that okay you can also be able to see account health issues you know if your account is undergoing any health issues you're going to actually see them over here 
one other thing too you're going to hear about is the aws cloud shell so the aws cloud shell just simply gives you that ability to be able to interact with your aws account programmatically so you see over here i can be able to um, interact with this aws account programmatically there are two ways you can actually make calls on aws account you can do it through the management console which is this beautiful interface or you could actually use cloud shell to um, interact with your AWS account programmatically. So this Cloud Shell is pretty much just um, an interface on the management console, which you could simply use to interact with your AWS account programmatically. So you should know about Cloud Shell. Sometimes people are gonna use it when they wanna actually interact with your AWS account programmatically. So when you're assessing your AWS account programmatically or performing API calls programmatically, one thing you should know is that these api calls you need to understand aws uh, um, cli commands so you are actually going to need to understand aws cli commands like you're going to have cli commands to do different things like to access im users to create im users to create s3 buckets you can be able to have aws um, cli commands do that for you programmatically now i think that's pretty much um, what you should know so i'm simply just going to come back over here i clicked on account the first time the second thing you're going to see is organization. So if your account actually belongs to an AWS organization, you're going to see, and um, you're going to see it over here. So this is pretty much where you're going to access your AWS organization and all of that. This is pretty much where you're going to see your service quarters. A service quarter is just simply a limit, right, to the amount of resources that maybe a service can be able to have and, and all those things. Like for example, in your AWS account, the maximum number of S3 buckets you can have is 100, you know, so that becomes a service um, um, limit and all those things. So you can see your service quarters from here. You can also access the billing dashboard. And by default, when an account is created, um, only the root user can be able to access the billing dashboard. So you can see right now, this is the billing dashboard for this AWS account. You see, you can see how much you've actually spent and all those things. You can actually see different aspects, like how much you, you're spending and... Uh, and the services that are giving you the highest spend is it virtual machines or is it your virtual private cloud it's going to actually tell you from here so you can see a couple of different things too from the other side you know this is pretty much where you come and you create your budget like we did the previous time like if you're trying to set up a monthly cost limit you know you can be able to create a budget here and, and all those things you can also see the services where you actually have like free tier Free tier just simply means that AWS is going to give you a certain number of hours for free, right? So you can be able to see your free tier limit for which service that free tier actually applies to. You can also see your brief, your billing preferences from here. You know, you can be able to see your billing and um, preferences and all that. You can also see your payment preferences, your tax settings and, and all those things. So guys, that is simply a rundown of the AWS management console what the different things are and what they are simply um, useful.